Okay, I'm excited for this. So, I've made... I've read this like a hundred times. There's a, there was a civilization. They uh, were awesome. Um, you know, they had, they had stuff. There's doors. There's rumors that there were keys in the door and that broke it. And, and then the key was access could only be used by the High Lord. And they had a scepter, and they, when he was there, they prospered. But then, like this, something happened, so they died. And light went away, and so this guy is searching to see what happened. Evil, good, all that beautiful stuff. Not too. I'm not too. It's not like it's like a story. Is like okay, awesome stories are fun. What I want to know is the story, but not. That this game is trying, that this game is purposely trying to tell me, but what this game, the story that this game is implicitly telling me, and that story is the story of the person who made it. Oh, see, there's a story behind every game. There's a story behind every thing, right? Whether it be, whoops, whether it be, uh, um, man, it's hard to like play and talk. <laughs> You have a thought. You're like, hey, I want to do something that represents this thought. You somehow try to use that. You get a medium to express this. And so, to me, this games like this, independently developed games, are are an expression of the person who designed them. And the smaller the game is, the more accurate of an expression it is of the person who designed it. The bigger you get. The less that there is accurate it is because you have to please or it's made for a much wider audience or the person who designed it doesn't have as much in, um, say into how it's made. And so I like these level of games because it's made by one person. In this case, Daniel something. Daniel Linsen. He probably made it like a... He had a, a thought one day. He wakes up he's like, you know what? Like he, he already likes games. Like you can just say that. You can assume that, right? That's his form of art, right? Maybe one day in his game developing life, he woke up and said, Oh my god, I want to express something. I have this awesome thought. Pajama... This guy's following me. Like the first creature to follow me. Pajamas or something. And he wants to express it, so he does. He makes a small little game. You know, you're throwing a javelin doesn't take his entire life. It allows him to express what he wants to express. Is find out the story behind that. So I want to look at this game. I guess I could have summarized that much more better than I did. What is the story behind the reason he made this game? Is it just his way of practicing the craft? Was there something unique that he wanted to explore? I haven't fully developed how I'm going to explore the personality of the designer behind these games because this I just had this thought and so that's what I'm doing and so as I play this game I'm probably going to figure out how I'm going to do it better so far what I got is Whoa! <laughs> that was kick-ass there's gonna be a mechanic of a game man I'm doing that every time now so that the mechanics are usually what Hopefully I get my... after I... Oh no, I have to enter with it? Oh, shite. So the mechanic of the game is usually like one of the first things I think a game designer would um, think of. He's like, oh my god, I want to make a game that has like this type of mechanic. See if it's even possible, right? Like all those game jams, like they all have like a certain rule that you need to obey, right? So I can see, I can see that being a huge motivation for a game designer. How much of it is his personality, and how much of it is simply he has <laughs> three of them at a time? Oh my God, I'm kicking ass. How much of it is his personality, and how much of it is him just obeying some rules, right? Oh man, I can't get past. Oh Jesus, there's no way I'm getting past. I'm dead. Oh, is he? Is it? Is this game like this because he had an experience? in his life. He's expressing the emotions behind that experience with this game 
or is there a rule that's, that has defined what this game is like? It's not so. It's not a reflection of his personality. It's simply him obeying a certain rule. So he's willing to enter these game jams, obey certain rules to see where the the, the limited create. Oh shoot! I can't get him. The limited creativity. See where that takes him. I gotta say something right now though. This part right here is kind of weird because like this is kind of annoying to get, you know? But I have to get it every single time I die. So I can't kill the creatures and then get it. And I die a lot! And I like that I don't know this dude, because then it, it, it allows my judgments to be much more authentic. No, not authentic. Authentic would mean that I know him really well. They'd be much more innocent and I, I wouldn't be swayed to judge him a certain way simply because I know him. I'm like, oh yeah, but that's not Daniel. Oh no, no, that's not Daniel. I know Daniel. And Daniel, this is what Daniel do. This is what Daniel was trying to do. This is what he was trying to do. You know, that's what that's what Daniel is. Yeah, I can't do that. All I can do is judge it based on the games he makes. I know that um a lot of people develop games game jams and stuff, and so that I got to really consider that. I never considered that when I was thinking about doing this. Since game jams will not allow me to really explore the person. That, God! Woo! Rules that are that are imposed in game jams, they're not gonna I have to take that into consideration. So in order to keep this more organized, I just have to find out if the game that I'm playing was made in part of for a game jam. And then I have to decide the rule that that game jam had. I cannot use a mechanic in that rule as a way to figure out who this the personality of this person. And that's okay. I suck big time. Ooh. This is kinda hard. I can't talk while I'm doing this. Oh shit, no, not yet. What aspects of this game have I seen now that could be possible signifiers or personality identifiers? <laughs> that, was, that was. Oh, I'm fucked up. That guy's gonna kill me. So, right now we have some limitations in this game. You only have. You have to. You can only exit and enter a level with this javelin. So, and you only use this one javelin to kill everything in the entire level. What does that say about his personality? Finally, I spot the sector in the deep reaches of a cave. As I approach, I hear a bloodthirsty screech from above. It's a monster demon. <laughs> oh, shit. He, he ain't dying. It's a, it's the, it's the, Cannot kill monster. Well, I guess he takes more than one hit. Oh, okay, you can just jump around and get him. Oh shit! But this part's really fun though. It's really fun to just jump around and be like, hey, 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 hey. The AI in this game is pretty, pretty primitive. Uh, <laughs> and I guess I'm pretty primitive too then. Jeez, I'm, I suck! Wait. Wait. <laughs> ah. I got this down, though. <laughs> got it. One more time, I guess. And he did it. Yeah. That was a kick-ass little celebration for me. Okay, the scepter is heavier than I thought, but I need both hands to hold it up. As I try to decide where to go next, I feel a tiny desperate tug from the scepter itself. It seems to be urging me east! With nothing else to go off, or to get off, I hold the scepter in front of me and follow it further into the Zadak. Chapter 2. The tug of the scepter, my constant guide, ceases abruptly. I stop and listen. There is a sound coming from deep below of legs pattering on rock. I examine a nearby floor and find a crack. Just large enough. I feel like I'm playing D&D &D right now. Now I don't. 
cool. He added like a story element to introduce a new mechanic of dropping down. On it, we have various things here. But one of them is that that bat. I didn't see it. That's one of the things I did, that I didn't see that bat. You can only you have to use the same thing the whole level. The mechanic is designed as man limitation limit. You're limited to one thing the whole level. What does that say about the author's personality? He likes limitations. The author finds creativity, he finds um, joy in limiting oneself. He finds beauty and simplicity, maybe. Okay? Introducing a new mechanic by adding to the story. Another thing though is this game this game has that, that element of being like actiony where you just like crazy good. So you can like hit things from afar and not do that. Oh, the, it doesn't oh shit! See that's a new element thing. You can't throw it down now. So now I have to like play with this guy, dance with him a little bit before I can kill him. Shoot. This is not easy. Mother Mercy, this is freaking ridiculously hard. trying to get this thing. You can just walk right over it. <laughs> I get that. I got that. Quick. No! God! This is... I love the way the difficulty just kind of happened now. Yeah, <laughs> you see that? No! <laughs> Do it again! Doesn't matter. Now I just gotta get the secret thing. So far these secret things haven't been too ridiculous. I don't know what they do though. Got it! Dead! Almost dead. Jeez. I was just like, oh, by the way, I'm gonna freaking make this crazy difficult. God, should have saw that coming. gonna happen Ugh. oh jeez I cleared everything <laughs> that was so cool oh shit I'm dead okay got him that was awesome I'm hoping I can do that every time and I gotta do this I do not buckle under pressure Especially under crazy platformer stuff like this. Man, if every one of those falls was positioned right under a pit, that would be evil. Yeah. See, this is when it feels cool, when you feel like you're a badass. When well, you're really not. You just think you are. And now you throw it into a corner that you clearly cannot get. Oh, jeez. I gotta touch the head of that. Come on, just jump perfect height. Jump the perfect height. 